Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Angel Saxena. I am a director of photography and the iColorist based in Mumbai, India. If you are following this series, don't forget to give it a subscribe and drop your comments. That will be very helpful. Uh, in today's video, we are going to talk about uh, the user interface of DaVinci Resolve. So let's cut to the chase. Follow me to the computer. All right. So in the previous video, we learned how to make a blank project. We learned also how to organize stuff, how to load media into your bins. But what happens when you try to import some video and this error occurs? Well, it wants you to either change your project frame rate or uh, have no effect on it. Let's click on don't change. Uh, for the moment, it doesn't matter if you uh, choose whichever option because we can change the FPS of each and every timeline that we are working on inside one single project. So we are going to learn that in a later stage. Right now, uh, let's organize all of these into bins like we did in the previous video. For that, I have a template. Uh, let's copy and uh, paste it. Now let's open my footage, my video folder and well, where is the video that I've just imported? Is it gone? No, it's not in any folder. That's why it's not showing up here. It will be inside the master tab, which has these folders, which I just pasted, but these clips are outside for the moment. Let's drag and drop them to the desired folder. All right, so now that I have organized them, let's move ahead. In the user interface, we have seven different pages, right? Uh, the first two pages are media and cut. Let's talk about them after the edit page because the edit page is the most important page that you will have to learn. Now in edit, uh, you know how to import stuff. Now let's look at uh, these two windows. Well, on the left, you will see whatever is selected on the media bin. For example, if you uh, select some audio, it will show the waveform here. If you select some video, like I've just done, it will show the video. What will come on this window is whatever is on your timeline, right? So let's drag this video clip to the timeline. Now, uh, when I'm scrubbing through the timeline, this window is not affecting at all because I'm not scrubbing through the media pool now. I'm scrubbing through the timeline. So whatever you have in effect, whatever you are editing will be on the right side of the screen. You can make it one screen by clicking this button. This will single it out. Now it will do a dual purpose job. When you double click on any item on the media bin, it will show you the source. And when you scrub on uh, the timeline, it will switch back to the uh, program window. So that's how you can uh, select these two modes of displays. Now, uh, I will discuss more about the timeline in the next video. Let's first jump to Inspector. Inspector uh, is where you alter the settings to a video, to a photograph, to a audio, to an audio. When you uh, click on any object or any clip on the timeline, it will appear. Whatever effects uh, you pull, whatever uh, changes you want to do to settings like uh, uh, when you hover over the video, you can see I can zoom in and out, I can rotate the angle, I can do all sorts of different things. For the audio as well, I have so many settings. There can be more uh, settings added to these effects transitions when you select them through here, for example. This is the effect step. You can collapse it or uh, expand it uh, with this button. Similarly, you can collapse the media pool by clicking that button. This is how you interact with the user interface. You can just uh, hit on buttons like if you want to close the inspector, just click on it, it will disappear. Now uh, with effects, for example, uh, let's just put any effect on the video clip. Once it's there, uh, you can see, you can see the effect on the right window, which is the program window and nothing happens on this window because this is the media pool. Right, but how do you change the uh, effect on this, um, you know, clip? You go to the inspector and now this effects tab is enabled. You can do the whole setting or whatever, you can uh, disable it. So that's what the inspector does. Let's close it up. Let's close effects. What it does is expand the timeline for a bigger view. Now, uh, I'm not diving deep into the timeline uh, right now. 
but uh, it helps to get a larger view when you have so much going on in your timeline. Right, what is metadata? Metadata is anything that you have selected on uh, the media pool, it will show you the details of that clip. What is mixer? Mixer is this thing which shows you the audio level. When I play back a certain clip which has audio, it will start showing you the levels. You can close it obviously, uh, you can collapse it by just pressing the button and you can expand it by pressing the button again. We have a quick export option, but uh, we are not, never going to use that for exporting because that's a very simple way of exporting. It may lead to quality losses and everything. So let's not discuss that. Uh, index and sound library is also not very relevant for us right now. So yeah, this is the edit page. Now you can uh, use these uh, edges to expand these uh, sections, right? But there's a limit. Uh, to uh, tell where you can expand obviously so similarly you can expand this media page also uh, sorry media section also but I generally don't want to disturb this much I want to have it open but not expand it a lot because then it will shrink my timeline so what instead I can do is go to the media page right now as you can see it's a different view of the videos here of the files well, it's just an option. You can select the icon to make um, big, bigger thumbnails, you know. And similarly, like in edit page, we have this slider. In media page also, we have the same settings. So I can make the thumbnail small and bigger and I can choose between these modes. Right. Now, uh, I can also see FPS and resolution here. I can, um, I can drag more things. For example, I want to see the file type. I can drag it here. To see what kind of file is it right i can rename things by uh, double clicking like so i can just not rename this master because that's the master file uh, because it's the master folder so i can't rename it but uh, other than that i can rename anything here i can even rename my video clips by double clicking on them and i can rename that here now whatever i have selected here i can make a in point by i and out point by o and that selection and that clip will be selected on my edit page as well and the selection is already made as you can see i can just drag and drop it here if i want a smaller selection i can do that here as well just i and o and then a smaller selection is here all right so there are multiple ways of dragging and dropping uh, footage to your timeline but the timeline we are going to discuss in a separate video so don't uh, get caught up in that all right, uh, the cut page I'm going to ignore. Uh, there are some people who love the cut page. Uh, it's probably easier to, uh, you know, make an, make an assembly of your edit lineup. But all of that you can do in the edit page and why do extra work in the cut page. So let's just skip that. Uh, Fusion is for your VFX. Uh, it's node based just like the color tab. This is also node based, but it's slightly different. But there are input and outputs between which you work. Similarly, in Fusion also, there is, an, uh, there is a media in, there is a media out, and you do your VFX work in between. Uh, let's not learn that in just one video, okay? This is Fairlight for your audio needs. You can zoom in and uh, see your waveforms very detailed. Uh, this, this goes beyond what you can do in the edit page. In the edit page, you can only go uh, to a certain extent because it's frame based and lastly we have the deliver page well deliver page is responsible for all things exports right so we have some presets uh, we can use them for sure but if you want proper control of your bitrate of your channels and audio type and video type this is the place to go and we can also export only audio only video or them together and so on and so forth so we are not going to learn exporting in this video, uh, a separate video will come, I assure you. Now to save your progress, obviously you can do Control S, but sort of you don't need to because DaVinci Resolve has a function you can see in preferences, in user, in project save and load, it's called live save. So every button that you click, it makes sure that it saves that progress inside Resolve. Also, you can set it up to make timely backups. For example, I have backups performed at every 10 minutes. So for example, I make a few changes and I want to go back. Obviously, I can do Control Z to redo my actions. 
uh, sorry undo my actions but there is an extent to tell where you can go and if you want uh, to go back 10 minutes or 20 minutes you can choose those backups later i will show you how to manage your backups in a separate video now uh, in a very basic term <laughs> this is what the whole user interface is like it's fairly simple you can move across you can uh, make things bigger and smaller you can toggle things on and off which is very handy you can obviously do that for multi screens as well right now for the purpose of this demonstration i am using a, a single screen only it's turned off right now otherwise it would have a check anyway in the next episode we are going to learn uh, how to make a timeline how to organize your timelines in a proper way and how to manage footage uh, you know inside the timeline how to scrub around properly how to make things small large how to uh, you know you'll learn in the next video <laughs> don't worry about it so we'll pick up from where we have left in today's video in the next one i hope to see you there thank you so much for watching